Whew. Welcome to Brighton. Hello guys, welcome to Brighton. My home for the last 13 years. And seagulls for a lot longer than 13 years. In this video, I just want to give you a taster of what life is like in the city. We'll walk along the seafront, we'll visit the Royal Pavilion, and we'll do some shopping or window shopping in the North Lanes. Let's go. So yes, usually when I go traveling, I am the foreigner in a place, I'm not the local, but today I am the local here in Brighton. There's the sightseeing bus. We don't need the sightseeing bus today, I promise you. This is the British Airways I-360, the tallest structure in Brighton. Stands 162 meters tall. And it overtook the white residential building over there called Sussex Heights as the tallest structure in Brighton. And here we've got a perfect view of the West Pier right next to the I-360, as you can see the observation tower in full swing there. But yes, the West Pier, the most photographed structure in all of Sussex. Despite it just being a derelict metal structure, but it does have quite an impressive history. So it was established in 1866, designed by Eugenius Birch, who designed quite a lot of pleasure piers in England. And it was closed to the public in 1975. On the 28th of March, 2003, the pavilion at the pier head caught fire and fire crews were unable to save a building because part of the walkway to the pier collapsed and so they couldn't get there to extinguish it and a more severe fire in May that same year 2003 took place on the 11th and 12th of May and that destroyed the rest of the concert hall. There are conspiracy theories as well as to how the fires in 2003 started. Many people believe it's actually arson, but because the investigators could not sort of establish the cause of the fire, that remains unconfirmed. And you would have thought the pier would have better luck in 2004, the next year after the fires. But in June 2004, there was a massive wind that destroyed the pier even further. And in July 2004, the following month, English Heritage declared the pier beyond repair. So it's just sitting there in its derelict metal state for us to take pictures of and to admire. But it is beyond repair. Also here on the seafront, you can see the upside down house, which you can go and visit got the beach club several hotels and some beautiful stalls and shops here along the seafront selling everything from beach gear hats towels summer dresses of course the usual postcards and birthday cards and here we are passing the magnificent Grand Hotel. And the Grand Hotel, of course, has got a bit of a story behind as well. On the 12th of October 1984, this is the hotel where the IRA tried to assassinate Margaret Thatcher. She came away unscathed, narrowly, but there were casualties. One of the great sad days in UK politics. Brighton is, of course, also known as London by the Sea. So lots of people from London and other parts of the UK come to Brighton when it's sunny weather, on weekends, dirty weekend in Brighton, lots of stag parties and inn parties. And it's just generally a very fun place to explore. You can see here lots of people on the beach, the Pebble Beach, people playing volleyball and tennis and basketball lots of activities let's go down to the beach a bit and explore a bit over there and of course this is a pebble beach as opposed to a sandy beach you can see lots of different pebbles of different shapes and sizes and i've read 
and it's estimated that there are hundreds of billions of pebbles on Brighton and Hove's beaches. Quite extraordinary. And the other thing that I noticed as a South African when I first arrived in Brighton and in England is people just know how to enjoy the sun. And they don't take it for granted like people in South Africa or in other hot parts of the world. This is how you enjoy the sun, people. Take note. Ice cream, donuts, beer, lifeguards on duty. And a few more ice cream shops and coffee shops around here. Wow, just look at all these umbrellas. And today the water actually comes quite close. It's always busy in this part of town on weekends, that's for sure. Here you can also take the sightseeing bus if you're a tourist. But I am a local, so we don't need this sightseeing bus today. That is guaranteed. Check this out. Milkshakes, coffee, donuts, smoothies, chocolate and snacks. S-N-A-K-S. And here is the iconic Brighton Palace Pier, also known by its shortened name Brighton Pier. And unlike the West Pier we saw earlier, this one is very much still in operation. Established in 1899, the character of a pier changed in the 70s and 80s from one which provided entertainment. So there was a theater in here to one which now provides amusement rides and there's roller coasters, etc. Let's go check it out. So lots of stuff you can buy here, donuts and crepes. You can buy candy floss. And of course, there are magnificent views. You can see the West Pier. Over there you can see the i360. And lots of people having a wonderful day. first part of the pier done. Of course in British life historically the pier played an important part in social life and still does. This is where people meet up and where people met up in the past. Okay, let's walk a bit further. There's more amusement rides over there. So there are people who are avoiding the pier today. They're on a boat probably having some drinks away from the carnage. Cornish pasty fish and chips of course a pier is not a pier without fish and chips that is for sure more candy floss bubble tea enjoy your favorite flavor people on deck chairs some amusements donut factory and a sign that says you belong here I think I actually do I do belong here Lots of parents bringing their kids out for a, a ride on the amusement. This is the other side of a pier. You can see a lot of people on this side as well. 
sunbathing, tanning. You got Brighton Marina over there. There's a nudist beach as well on that side of town. And in the back there, you can see some limestone cliffs. So yeah, that was it from the pier. Let's go and check out more of the town. And we're just here in Victoria Gardens, walking to the Royal Pavilion, which is one of the iconic buildings of England. And you'll see why. Check this out. This is Brighton Pavilion. The Royal Pavilion. Just want to give you a close-up of the Royal Pavilion. And as we walk here through the Pavilion Gardens, we also got the Brighton Dome on the right here. And the Brighton Dome is of course where ABBA in 1974 won the Eurovision contest with their song Waterloo, which of course became one of the most iconic songs of the 20th century. And here you go guys, the iconic Brighton Pavilion. One of the iconic buildings of England. Construction started in 1787 and it was built in three parts for George the Prince of Wales who in 1811 became the Prince Regent and in 1820 ultimately became King George IV. And he used this as his summer retreat, party palace, lots of shenanigans taken place here and it is built in the Indo-Saracenic style which is or was popular in places like India in the 19th century. John Nash who designed Buckingham Palace also had a hand to play here. He got involved in some extension work in the year 1815 and following the reign of King George IV, William IV and Queen Victoria also used this as a summer retreat although Queen Victoria eventually moved her summer retreat to the Isle of Wight. Some more of the pavilion gardens on the Royal Pavilion Estate and some music. guys so that was the Royal Pavilion what did you think of it and also would you be able to live in Brighton from what you've seen so far I've been here for 13 years so I guess the answer from my perspective is a resounding yes so so far we've walked past the piers along the seafront and we've seen the Brighton Pavilion now I want to take you to the North Lanes, which is a sort of shopping area, very sort of culturally significant. It's got a very bohemian vibe, so let's go. Right guys, we are here, we are at the North Lane entrance. Perfect for people watching. We'll walk along, we'll do some window shopping as well. And just observe the eccentricity of Brighton, which is quite prevalent in this part of town. Here's a William IV pub. We talked earlier about William IV, who obviously succeeded George IV as the King of England. Let's go in here, in Gardner Street, which is closed down over weekends so that people can dine al fresco and enjoy a bit of sun. And you can see loads of people out, loads of shops, loads of stalls. Here is a Comedia, lots of shows and entertainment you can come and watch here and you can buy vegetarian shoes. Spreading happiness, reimagining tea. And yeah, I can stroll here for hours just getting lost. Clothing shops. The pink snail there is also iconic here in Brighton. If you feel really brave, you can come and do some body piercing. If you feel really thirsty, there's always a pub in walking distance wherever you are in the city. 
And yes, we'll go to Kensington Gardens in a bit, but I just want to show you some of the graffiti on the side here. Yeah, there you go. Music stars. And lots of clothes and books and trinkets. Golf clubs and jewelry, ties. A little bit off the beaten track because most people go to Kensington Gardens, which is where we'll go now. And I don't have statistics on this, but this is probably Brighton's busiest pedestrian street. Definitely over weekends, Kensington Gardens. To be honest, it doesn't look as busy today as it. I've certainly seen it a lot worse. Yeah, denim jackets, shirts. So, take a note of the prices. What I'll do in a separate vlog is I'll go and explore some of Brighton's charity shops, give you an indication of some of the real bargains and things you can find. But this is good for just a bit of window shopping and strolling around. It's super's paradise. If you're a collector of something and you're struggling to find that missing item in your collection, come to the shop here. I think you'll be amazed at what you find here. Maybe for Pride next year. Lots of vintage clothes, trinkets, bits and bobs. Look how colourful it is here. Got the Pride colours. And here in Kemp Street, if you're from Cape Town, it's not quite the Boerkarp area, but it also has colourful houses. Maybe it's a bit far-fetched to say it's got a bit of Cape Town in the streets of Brighton, but there you go. Some more beautiful graffiti. Lots of places to eat. This is a favourite, of course, for many. Lechosa, Mexican food. Griffelger Lane. So, graffiti, Griffelger. I think you get it. Bit of food in the shade, and all plant based options, vegan burgers, <laughs> and yeah, also part of the North Lanes. You've got Sydney Street, lots of comic book shops and music shops in this particular street as well, but also a few coffee shops, pubs. You can see North Lane music, comics, and the graphic novel shop. Dirty Harry. So, already cheaper here in Sydney Street than in other parts of the North Lanes. Three pounds cash only, five pounds cash only. One of the great things of this city is just how free people are. They are very comfortable in their own skin. And people are very relaxed and it's almost like living in a bit of a bubble sometimes it doesn't feel like you live in the real world but that's the magic of brighton and before we say goodbye guys i just want to show you what i think is one of the most instagrammable hotspots here in brighton it's a mural on the side of the prince albert pub and loads of famous musicians how many of those do you think you can name So yeah guys, I hope you enjoyed this walk around Brighton to give you a bit of a taster of what the city has to offer. My hometown for the last 13 years. It's obviously very special to me and I hope to bring you some more footage of this beautiful city in due course. But for now, thanks for watching my videos. If you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button. It really helps this channel to grow and I really appreciate your support. But for now, I'm saying goodbye. See you again soon.